Hey, mister, what's wrong with you? Why the long face, sonny? Well, sir, I'm a small business owner, and one of my employees just died. But truthfully, he was more than just an employee. He was my friend. I am sorry for your loss, young fella, but death is part of life. No one ever said that death has an escape clause. Tell me a little bit more about the person who died. Well, for many years, James was my right-hand man. And any success that my business experience was in part due to James' hard work. You know, James was loyal and he was one of my most entrusted employees. And as I said, he was my friend. Truth be told, he is what I would consider one of God's special creations. Kind of like those old school muscle cars that James loved so much. One of God's special creations? What are you talking about, mister? What made him so special? Hmm, James was liked by everybody. You know, I would come in and service one of my customers, and the receptionist would always say, Hey, Daniel. But when James came in, totally different story. When James came in, they'd go, Hey, James! How are you, James? We're so happy to see you, James! And I'm thinking, what am I, chopped liver? But then I thought to myself, this dude must be paying them, because I don't understand how he could get the presidential treatment, and they treat me as if I'm just some... Some, some average Joe walking in off the street. Have you ever considered, doctor, that maybe they just don't like your behind? Nah, I don't think that, but clearly I was no James Sanders. You know, I would always ask James, James, what do you have on these women? Why do they love you so much? In a typical James fashion, he'd humbly say, I don't know, I'm just a regular guy. To the contrary, there's nothing regular about James. There's something special about that guy because everybody seemed to love them some James. A couple of months before James died, I noticed a change in him. You know, he just didn't seem like himself. I knew he was having some medical issues, but I really didn't know to what extent they were. But probably about a week before he went into the hospital for the final time, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I needed to call James and ask him if he had eternity insurance. Good Christ told Moses, man! Eternity insurance? What's that, mister? So I called James and said, James, you and I have worked many a long night. In fact, some of those nights were spent driving up and down these country roads, dark country roads, mind you, that were filled with deer. And most of the time, uh, we were able to uh, successfully navigate those deer. But on one occasion, we actually hit one of them bad boys. Caused $1,500 in damage to my car. And I have to tell you, that's the most expensive meal I never got a chance to eat. During these road trips, James and I would always talk about Jesus, heaven and hell, and salvation. So I asked James, James, have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And James said to me, Daniel, yes, I have. And I have to tell you, when he told me that, my heart was filled with joy. Why? Because I knew that my friend, no matter what the situation was, would be okay. Psst, death has an escape clause. However, salvation takes a sting out of death. Hmm, I guess death does have an escape clause. Truthfully, salvation does take the sting out of death. Man. I gotta get me some of that their uh, eternity insurance. Let me explain to you why this was such a special moment for me and why I consider this a blessing. Oftentimes people die and you never know the condition of their soul. In other words, you don't know if they're going to heaven or hell. In the case of my friend James Sanders, because he had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his savior, uh, I know he's in heaven because the scripture clearly tells us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Therefore, I know that I will see my friend again. So let me ask you, doctor, what do you think James's legacy will be, sir? The greatness of a person cannot be measured by fame, fortune, wealth, or other mature possessions. To the contrary, the greatness of a person can be measured by the positive impact that they've had on the lives of others. Because I have to tell you, long after you're dead and gone, uh, that fame and fortune and mature possessions, those things will wither away. But if you've had a positive impact on people, that will continue for generations to come. In the case of James Sanders, there was a special group of customers who really cared about James. James and I would talk about the ladies of the pharmacy all the time. James, listen up, buddy. Here's what your beloved ladies of the pharmacy had to say about you. James was a kind, gentle soul. He always had a smile on his face and was one of the sweetest people I knew. He was always smiling and asking each of us how our day was going. He loved to talk about cars. He was a very thoughtful man. James was genuine. 
His smiles were real, and he truly loved people. James was always happy to be at work and was a super sweet man. I am going to miss hearing his catchphrase. I heard that. He was always positive and loved beautiful days. He would remind me that I only had an hour left until time to go. Genuinely a great person. He always talked about winning the lottery, but we won the lottery by knowing him. How could you know that someone who comes into your life to clean your work area could become a person that means so much to you? James was a friend who always brightened up my work day. I know he cared about me and everyone in our pharmacy. We will miss him so much. Now that's a legacy. Let me leave you with a couple of poor man's proverbs from note to self, faithful inspiration and aspiration. The life you live is a work of art. At the end of life, either it's worthy to be put up in a museum or a thrift shop. Someday you will see his face, Jesus, whether heaven or hell bound. Note to self, the question is, will your meeting be brief or last all of eternity? Now, in the case of my friend James Sanders, his life was museum worthy. And I know he's chilling with Jesus right about now. And in fact, if there are cars in heaven, I'm sure he has a couple of Mopars right now. Farewell, James. I love you, man. See you on the other side.